families that are sharing one computer where you've got people working from home it's not an oasis a space for everyone how do we find that room to go into and shut the door some of you might need to go to the bathroom to shut the door literally and just find five minutes of space for others like me i my room is on my daily exercise i go for a cycle ride each day and that's my room to spend time with god it might be you just need to walk to the end of the garden but what's really important is that you say okay god here i am i've come for a chat you don't have to use those exact words you see it's not always about even saying stuff it's just being present determining that you're going to give God this time the God who was not in the earthquake or the wind or the fire but was the still small voice still wants to talk to us we need to allow some room for some silence in our word to listen in his book how to pray a simple guide for normal people Pete Gregg says this, he says, I've come to believe that 99% of it, when he's referring to prayer, is just showing up. Making the effort to become consciously present to the God who is constantly present to us. Let's show up in the first place. And then when you pray, use your own language. Don't worry about having the, the right religious language. Don't worry about whether these are proper words or not. Just be you and be honest. God wants us to come to him honestly. If you're upset or angry or worried or anxious, just let God know. He's big enough. He can cope if you just want to have a rant at him about something. What he wants more than anything else is that we spend time with him. He knows what's going on inside anyway. We're not fooling anyone if we suddenly come out with a lovely set of words, but inside something's going off. God is far too real to be met anywhere other than in reality. One of the great church fathers, Athanasius, said this. He said, God's, God's ears hear the heart's voice. God's ears hear the heart's voice. Let God hear what's really going on inside us. And you know some of the simplest prayers, again Pete Gregg says four words, these are the simplest prayers. Please, thank you, wow, and help. Of course you see some of us even find the right words then very difficult. We don't know what to say but what about if you read one of the psalms as one of your prayers or found a book on prayer or even googled prayers i can pray or what about if your prayer was painted as a picture knitted what about if your prayer is actually dance or music god loves creativity i love this line from his book keep it simple keep it real and keep it up when the disciples asked jesus to teach them how to pray he gave them the words of what we now know as the lord's prayer now of course we can just pray that as a prayer one prayer sometimes there's a danger that we just read the words and don't think what's behind them I remember a, a member of the clergy that's not in Stroud and hasn't been for some time that when he read the Lord's Prayer, it seemed to me like he was seeing how fast he could get through it. Was sort of, our Father in who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. It is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever, and amen. And it was like he just needed to get through it. But what if we take our time? What if we use the Lord's Prayer as the, as the basis, as a framework, a skeleton, line by line, our Father, our Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by thy, be thy name. 
What about these prayers that, God, would you give us? Would you forgive us? Would you lead us? Would you deliver us? The Lord's Prayer is an incredible framework that we can use if we don't know how to pray or even what to pray. Prayer has to be intentional. For many years, and I've, please forgive me if this is too simple for some people, but I've used what's known as the acts of prayer, where the A stands for adoration. The C is confession, saying sorry to God, that's important too. The T of acts is thanksgiving. We've got so much to be grateful to God for, and we need to remember to thank him. And then S is a big word, it's supplication, but it basically means asking God. Asking for ourselves, asking for others. You see, praying is not just a shopping list. It's not a list of all the things we want God to do. Yes, asking is part of it, but there's so much more to prayer than that. It's about this lovely conversation that God wants to have with us. This communion that we can commune with the God who wants to commune with us. It's a very honoured position to be in. When we pray about the small things in life, we get to live a life of gratitude. There's nothing too big or too small to pray about with God. He just longs to hear our voice. The Lectio 365 app that myself and I know a number of you are doing starts each day with saying we're going to pray, P-R-A-Y, we're going to pause. The R is to reflect or to rejoice. The A is to ask and the Y is to yield. Yield to what it is God would have us do. And then I'd like to read you this quote. It's as you spend time focusing on his greatness in worship and prayer, remembering his kindness and rejoicing in his faithfulness, that your faith quotient will rise. It's by celebrating the small things that God has already done that you'll find faith for the things he hasn't done yet. Record your answers to prayer and return to them regularly. Absorbs God's word in the Bible, especially his promises. Invest time with those who are contagiously full of his spirit. Avoid those whose cynical attitude would sap your spiritual strength. Do these things regularly and your faith will grow. As I finish this short reflection, I want to remind you that, of course, prayer is a private conversation with God. But it is also what we do when two or three of us gather and have a conversation and pray for one another. It's what happens when we join a large church family together like this, online or in person. It's what happens on Friday mornings in the prayer group or what's happening on a Wednesday evening. It's been a huge joy to see so many of you joining for that half hour of prayer on a Wednesday evening. As together we come in corporate prayer. Whatever you do, I want to encourage you to keep praying in lockdown. When we get to family news, you'll hear of more opportunities to pray, more opportunities to put some of this into action. But just remember, it's a conversation with a God who loves you, who knows you better than you know yourself. So keep it simple, keep it real, and keep it up. And if you want to look for a few resources that might help you, I've already mentioned Pete Gregg's book. It's $3.99 if you get it on a Kindle at the moment on Amazon. And it's called How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. It's a brilliant book. If you want something a bit meatier that looks at the Lord's Prayer, 57 Words That Changed the World by Johnson. Or join us on the Lectio 365 app each morning, 10 minutes of prayer. Or if you'd like to look for the prayercourse.org, there's videos of Pete Gregg and the 24-7 prayer team taking you through the Lord's Prayer. Eight videos over eight weeks. I just want to encourage you, whatever you do, 
in this lockdown, make sure prayer is part of your day. Converse with the God who longs to converse with you. Thank you for listening.